What's going on, everybody? This is Dr. Weefer, and I'm here at the wetlands at Long Beach, New York. I want to talk to you guys about something called the primary productivity. Now, the primary productivity is something that's pretty important to learn about for your biology class. So that's why in this video, first, I'm going to show you guys what it is. Then I'm going to go over how do you measure it at places like these wetlands. And last, we'll go over some calculations on how to calculate primary productivity and other things like net productivity and gross productivity. So stick around and let's learn. So the first thing that we really get to iron out is how the energy flows from the sun and gets stored in the producers. Now the producers are the photosynthetic organisms such as plants or algae and literally starts the food chain for the consumers, which is the basis of the entire ecosystem. So when we talk about primary productivity, we're talking about how efficient these producers are in converting the energy from the sun and making it available to the rest of the ecosystem. Primary productivity actually can be thought of in two separate ways. Net primary productivity, or NPP, and gross primary productivity, or GPP. Keep in mind that all organisms need energy, so plants, just like animals, will undergo cellular respiration to break down organic material to make ATP. This is why the net productivity is going to be equal to the gross primary productivity minus respiration. This is just like earning money. If you have a job, you probably noticed you have a gross income and a net income. Gross income is how much money that you actually bring in. Net income is how much money you get to keep after all of the expenses. So then you could go out and spend your money on useful things like expensive cars. Hmm, how's primary productivity measured? Well. Consider the equation for photosynthesis. Sunlight plus a little water brings in carbon dioxide to be fixed into something organic like sugar and releases oxygen. So here it is. Because primary productivity is really a measure of the efficiency of these producers supporting the environment, we could actually look at the amount of energy captured, usually in something like kilocalories per meter squared. We could also look at the amount of biomass, how much plant material is there in order to support the food chain. We could also, in other situations, look at how much oxygen is released. Now this usually applies to aquatic systems because it's pretty easy to measure dissolved oxygen in water. It's time for some practice, so read along. The gross primary productivity of a coastal wetland in New York was measured to be 20 kilograms of carbon per meter squared over the course of a year. The respiration for the system is measured as 8 per year. So what is the net primary productivity for this wetland in terms of its carbon biomass? So pause the video if you like and give it a try. So on the equation, net primary productivity, which is the total gross primary productivity minus the respiration, plug in what you know, and you see that 20 is the gross, 8 is the respiration. What is left? And it is going to be 12. So if you got 12, great job. And of course, don't forget to put in your units when you talk about this. So one more practice problem before I show you guys some really cool things. So read the problem, pause the video, and then see if you're right. So pause the video now. All right, so assuming that you pause the video, we what are we looking for? We are looking for the gross primary productivity. So you plug in the rest of the values. And what do you get? You get an answer of 15,000 kilocalories per meter squared over the course of a year. So if you got the answer, awesome job. So how do scientists measure the primary productivity? One way is to measure the actual biomass by using satellite imagery coupled with highly specialized infrared photography at the height of the growing season. 
When it's not the heart of the growing season, scientists often set out by foot to take manual measurements to create maps to update databases in this rapidly growing field called GIS, or Geographic Information Systems. So I had the opportunity to go out with a few fellow teachers and scientists at a local wetland at low tide and take measurements to see if the wetlands were actually getting wetter over time, which would signify erosion. So here, these really dorky scientists, Dr. Vaccarello, my colleague, and my cousin, are taking measurements of the high marsh in order to determine how much water is left behind in these pans, or tidal pools, at low tide. It turned out to be a lot of fun, but it was really messy business. So here's the significance. If the primary producers of the wetlands get destroyed by things like pollution or erosion, you're affecting the health of the entire ecosystem. <coughs> All right, guys, so make sure you subscribe and leave your comments below, and I'll see you next time. What are we doing out here? I can, like, swamp.